The human heart, with 100,000 beats per day, it is our rhythm of life. But what happens when disease strikes? Find out about new treatments available and ways to prevent heart and vascular disease on Rhythm of Life, presented by Penn State Milton S. Hershey Medical Center. Good evening, I'm Chuck Rhodes. Thanks for joining us. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death for both women and men in the United States and kills over 7 million people worldwide each year. Approximately 70, rather 47 percent of cardiac deaths occur before emergency care can be provided. Some don't recognize that they're having a heart attack. Such is the case of a Dauphin County man who thought he had indigestion, but it turned out to be much worse. He was having a massive heart attack. Deborah Pinkerton has his story. How you doing? Okay, great, great. 58-year-old Jerry Goodrich is on his way to physical therapy. Every step he takes, Jerry's new best friend goes with him. His friend is a 450-pound machine, nicknamed Big Blue. It's the power unit that keeps his artificial heart beating and keeps Jerry alive. I'm really grateful that, that I have this. Otherwise, I wouldn't be alive. <laughs> that's, that's the bottom line. Six months ago, Jerry came to Penn State Milton S. Hershey Medical Center with chest pains. I just thought it was maybe indigestion or something. And uh, you know, when they said they had to do CPR, that it was failing and stuff, it was really scary. Dr. Walter Pay says Jerry had a massive heart attack. A few days later, Dr. Pay implanted an artificial heart. This is where the artificial heart is, in this area right here. There are only 12 hospitals in the country that do this operation, and Hershey Medical Center is one of them. He came in the hospital thinking he had a tummy ache, and when he woke up, he found out that not only didn't he have a tummy ache, but his heart was destroyed, and it was no longer present in his body, and he was now living with a plastic heart in his chest. Now, Jerry must wait for a donor heart. I don't think about it much means a person will have to, to die for him to live, so I really don't think about it. I, I know it's going to happen. Uh, sooner or later, just have to wait. Uh, and we're going to show you the conclusion of Mr. Goodrich's story a little later in the program. Bring us here in the studio, the medical director of the heart failure program at Penn State Hershey Heart and Vascular Institute, Dr. John Bamer. Doctor, uh, we looked at that and he didn't realize he was having a heart attack. Is that common? Is that something we have to deal with a lot? It is a common problem. Our organs aren't wired the same way as, say, your bones or your skin. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily feel it the same way when something's happening inside. And everybody's a little different. Everybody feels it just a little bit differently. And the, the symptoms from the heart can be anywhere between the jaw and the uh, belly button. So you have a wide range of areas in there. But common things are that you feel some kind of discomfort, some sense that something serious is wrong. You may feel a tightness, a squeezing sensation. Uh, you may be associated with sweating, uh, being sick to your stomach, short of breath, uh, a number of other symptoms that may tell you something wrong. And the important thing is if you think that there may be a serious problem going on, you think it might be coming from your heart, seek attention. Let somebody else figure it out. Don't wait. Don't, feel, don't wait and don't feel foolish if it's not because many times we have trouble figuring it out. Sure. Right, now tell us about this artificial heart that kept Jerry alive. Why is this artificial heart only av available at a handful of hospitals <coughs> and facilities such as yours? Well, this is a very advanced form of surgery and care, and this is a uh, recently approved type of uh, surgery, so they wanted to work with a number of centers that had better expertise with dealing with mechanical devices. And Hershey, basically from its inception, has been a world-recognized center for the work with mechanical devices. In fact, we've developed artificial hearts at Hershey, so we were a natural center to be involved with this. So you're leading the pack so far. Exactly. Looking good there. All right, let's check in with Deborah Pinkerton in our call center and find out what kind of questions we're getting from the viewers. Deborah. Hi, Chuck. The doctors are here. They're answering the calls. Lots of calls are coming in. Joining us here in the call center is Dr. Robert Atnip, the program director of vascular services. You're going to answer one of the calls we had tonight. How can I tell the difference between a severe panic attack and a heart attack? 
Well, Deb, that's a good question and a tough one because when you look at the symptoms of panic attacks and heart attacks, they're almost the same. Severe chest pain, shortness of breath, feeling terrified, those can really be symptoms of either condition. If you've had one or the other before, you can learn to tell the difference. But if it's your first episode, don't take chances, don't try to treat yourself, call your doctor and report the symptoms. Okay, thanks so much. And we will be back in just a little bit with more viewer questions, but we'll send it back to you, Chuck, in the studio. And when we come back after months of living at a medical center with an artificial heart, were they able to find that donor heart for Dr. Goodrich? We'll find for Mr. Goodrich. We'll find out coming up next. <laughs> 